Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A car has a 14-gallon gas tank. It can travel 48 miles on 1.6 gallons. How far can it go on 9 gallons? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we have this car. So a car has a 14-gallon gas tank. It can travel 48 miles on 1.6 gallons. How far can it go on 9 gallons? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 200 and 70 miles. All right, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, in my book, you're going to get a nice little happy face in A plus, A 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic math word problems, and that's what this is. Now, I'm going to be using um, a little bit of algebra to solve this problem. But you don't have to use algebra to solve this problem. You can kind of reason uh, through it. And uh, that's why I didn't say uh, solve this algebra word problem. Because when people uh, hear this word algebra, a lot of people have algebra phobia. And they'll be like, algebra, I'm not going to use algebra. I don't like algebra. Well, listen, algebra is a tool. okay? And the more tools you have, just as in anything, let's say you're a carpenter or if you work in construction or some sort of other trade, the more tools you have, the easier it makes things, right? And algebra is a tool. Matter of fact, uh, if you don't have the right tools for some projects, you want to be able to do it. Same thing in mathematics. If you don't understand algebra, you won't be able to solve a lot of problems. But in this particular case, uh, a lot of you probably figured this out without doing anything uh, overly complex, i.e. using algebra. But anyways, I'm going to show you how easy this is using algebra. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. Okay, so here is our problem. Anytime you are uh, doing a math word problem, always use the rule of three. Now, the rule of three is my little basic rule, but this is, you know, something I've learned uh, over you know, decades of doing math and teaching math is that if you slow yourself down, okay, if you are just patient uh, with letting your brain kind of kick in, you're going to be far better off. In other words, if you just read a problem one time, okay, and you start doing something, you're likely uh, going to take a wrong path and you're going to be like, you know what, that's not a good uh, place, you know, that's not a good strategy to go. And then you might kind of go back to the problem and then you're going to try another strategy. So to avoid kind of, you know, all these for, uh, false starts and stops, just uh, tell yourself, all right, I'm going to read the problem at least three times, even though I understand it, just let your brain kick in and just visualize it. And it's really important that you understand the question. Okay. So the question here is, how far can this car go on nine gallons? So we're looking for distance, right? So how far can it go on nine gallons? And of course, we have all this information here that we're going to have to use in order to figure this out. So the next thing we want to do is model the problem. And this is where math can get very creative. And the best way to model uh, any problem, if you can, is to visualize it, right? Because a picture is worth a thousand words. So if you can kind of model or kind of come up with a quick sketch. Oftentimes when you can kind of see the problem, you can kind of um, also see the solution. So let's go ahead and come up with a uh, quick uh, sketch. Of course, it just gives us an opportunity to practice our little basic uh, art skills here. So we have this car, right? This is my idea of a car. And let's go back to the problem here. It has a 14 gallon gas tank. Okay, so it has 14 gallon gas tank. So let's say this is the gas tank right there. 
and it can go 48 miles on 1.6 gallons. Okay, so let's go back here and just double check that we have the right information. Uh, it can travel 48 miles on 1.6 gallons. All right, so here is kind of the setup for us. All right, so let me just kind of fix this gallons. All right, so here's our car. It has a 14 gallon gas tank and uh, it can travel 48 miles on 1.6 uh, uh, gallons. All right, now, if we want to figure out uh, to, um, well, really, let's go back to the question, right? What are we trying to figure out of here? We're trying to figure out how far can it go on nine gallons? So, how, you know, what information do you think we need here? Well, you can see I already have written down. It would be nice to have miles per gallon. In other words, we want to uh, effectively see the mileage on this vehicle, okay? So miles per gallon, I know it's a pretty common um, metric, uh, now, if you happen to be in uh, a place that's not the United States, you know, you guys you have like kilometers per hour, but other, some, some other rating that tells you the mileage, the efficiency of this vehicle. So we're going to want to use this information here to establish the MPG, because once we have that, then it's going to be easy to figure out how far uh, this car can go on nine gallons. Now, uh, let's go ahead and figure out the MPG right now. So MPG stands again for miles per gallon. All right, so this is really important stuff. So miles per gallon, okay? This is what we call a rate in mathematics. So the, the P here, the per, when you hear anything, anytime you hear per, like miles per hour, uh, this is a fraction bar, okay? And the uh, letter in front of it is going to be our numerator. And then the letter, uh, after the P is going to be the denominator. So this is miles per gallon or miles per hour. So you always want to think in terms of a fraction, but uh, a rate, okay, is something uh, in mathematics. It's a fraction where we're comparing two different units of measure. So what is our numerator up here? Okay, we're comparing miles and gallons. Miles is distance. Gallons is a, a unit of uh, volume. So we're comparing distance to volume. They have nothing to do with one another. This is called a rate in mathematics. Now, when you are dealing with rates, you oftentimes uh, deal with ratios as well. And uh, if you're dealing with rates and ratios, well, you're going to be dealing with proportions. This is a big part of learning basic mathematics. So hopefully uh, some of you picked up on this, but let's go ahead and figure out how to establish our MPG, our miles per gallons. So we know that MPG is miles per gallon. So we can use um, any kind of, now, of course, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, this uh, car, you know, is it traveling on, you know, in the city? It's on the highway because the mileage is going to be different. Yes, I understand that. And I know you understand that, but we always want to, you know, uh, simplify math word prompts and never try to overcomplicate things. But we can get the mileage based upon this information right here. So if this car went 48 miles, uh, and uh, to, it used 1.6 gallons to go 48 miles, we can figure out the miles per gallon, okay? So we're gonna take this 48 right here, 48 miles and divide it by 1.6, and we're going to get 30, actually I can kind of, let me establish this a little bit better, 30 miles per one gallon, okay? Which is 30 miles per gallon. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, and this is our mileage for this vehicle. All right, now once we have this, then we can figure out the question, and the question is what? How far can it go on nine gallons? Okay, so let's go ahead and take that next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. That definitely helps me out, uh, you know, and it's not, uh, you know, uh, like a, a big thing for you to do, but it's a big deal for me, okay? It's kind of like that, uh, a thing when they, uh, Neil Armstrong, when he landed on the moon, of course, some people don't think that he landed on the moon, but anyways, I personally think so. So he landed on the moon. He said, that's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind, right? So this is one small step for you, but it's a huge leap for my YouTube channel because it really does help me reach as many people as I possibly can. I'm wrapping up uh, 2023 here, or I guess we all are, well, at least I'm posting this video at the end of 2023, and over this year, I think I got somewhere in the neighborhood of like 38 million views, which is crazy, and I picked up a, like an extra 100 
50,000 subscribers, which is amazing. I mean, I had a lot of great activity, but guess what? That's not enough for me because there is so many more people, an infinite amount of people that need to learn math and struggle in math. So I'm trying to reach those folks and this little tiny action that you could take will definitely help me out. So thank you so much. And if you are a subscriber, you know, I really do appreciate it. And I'm going to always try to deliver high quality math videos that keep you interested in learning mathematics. And if you're gonna subscribe, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this thing right here. All right, so this vehicle now, our lovely car, has its mileage rating at 30 miles per gallon. Okay, so 30 miles on one gallon. So how can we figure out uh, the you know answer to this question? Well, the answer to this question is how many miles is it going to travel on nine gallons? Okay, well, all we need to do is uh, say, well, if this 30 miles per gallon it really means what? Well, it's 30 miles per one gallon. In other words, it's going to go 30 miles on one gallon. How many miles is it going to go on nine gallons? Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. 2 2 math man, why don't you just multiply nine times 30? Well, nine times 30 is 270 uh, miles. Okay, now here, really, you know, I kind of uh, used uh, really basic math. I didn't even use algebra. You know, I think I probably misstated in the beginning that I was going to use algebra. Now, I could have used some algebra for sure, but, you know, I guess I didn't, you know, and I have to really kind of correct myself. Uh, but what we are talking about here is concepts uh, that you definitely are, you know, typically study in detail in algebra, like rates and ratios. I kind of set up an equation to solve this, but, you know, we kind of did this without algebra. Wow, that was pretty amazing, actually. But uh, let's go down here and uh, make sure we understand how to work with the units of measure because uh, this is something that a lot of students don't understand. Okay, so here uh, we have nine gallons and we're gonna multiply it by our MPG, right? So in other words, if I, can, if I have one gallon and my mileage is 30 miles per gallon, okay, and I only have one gallon in my gas tank, you're saying, boy, you know, how far am I gonna go uh, until I can, you know, until I run out of gas. Well, if you only have one gallon and you get 30 miles per gallon, well, it's obvious you have 30 miles before you run out of gas. If you have two gallons, it's going to be two times 30. You have 60 miles. If you have nine gallons, it's going to be nine times 30, which of course is 270 miles. But let's um, make sure we understand how to work with units of measure here, because this is important uh, as well. Okay, so right here, we have nine gallons, okay? We're multiplying by 30, which is our uh, miles per gallon, okay? So 30 is, a, uh, its unit of measure is miles per gallon. So we're gonna write this this way. So we have nine gallons over one times 30 miles per gallon, because if you look here, the answer is in miles. But why is that? Well, because it, uh, we could cross cancel these units right here. So we have gallons in the numerator, in gallons in the denominator, the gallons cross cancel, and we're left with miles. That is not a little trivial detail because working with the units of measure is very important as well. But uh, anyways, you know, uh, clearly I didn't really use much algebra here, so I kind of apologize for stating that I was going to use algebra. Okay, so some of you might saying, "Hey, Mr. You Two Math Man, get it together. You know, let's go. You know, if you're going to use algebra, use algebra. If you're not, you're not. <laughs> well, listen, uh, I'm not going to remake this video. I kind of like to be my natural self when I teach math, and really, my objective." Uh, it's not to teach math. Now, you might be saying, what are you talking about? Well, you know, I like to explain math because I think explaining is just a far less informal way of learning mathematics. But these concepts that we're talking about here, rates, ratios, proportions, you know, if you're studying this stuff, you're definitely going to get into some basic algebra. So, um, again, uh, if you are struggling with anything here, what you have to do is just learn math, you know, uh, one skill at a time, 
all right? Definitely don't try to uh, to say, well, you know, what's the minimum amount I need to know to solve this problem? Well, what's the minimum amount I need to know this problem? Maybe I need to know a little bit of this or a little bit of that. It doesn't work that way. Math is a collection of skills, okay? And you need to kind of learn the basic skills before you get to the more advanced skills. So if you are in algebra or if you want to learn algebra, or maybe if you want to just relearn math, by the way, too, if you're not a math student, you do want to relearn mathematics, uh, check out uh, two courses of mine. I've been uh, kind of promoting these courses a lot because a lot of people that watch my videos are actually not math students. So I think that's pretty cool. They're just interested in math. Uh, so the, here's two courses for you. My first is Math Skills Rebuilder. I teach you basic math algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and stuff like that. All that stuff that you forgot many, many years ago. If you just want to learn basic math first, check out my Math Foundations course. You can find links to all this stuff in the description. If you happen to be uh, an algebra student, you'll find my Pre-Algebra, Algebra 1 course, and then my other courses in the description as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.